Shalom, first and foremost, giving our praises, honor, glory, <coughs> and worship unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakodash, double honors unto the elders and the apostles. I do well overseeing the tabernacle of David, which are the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And greetings and salutations to Achim upon the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh in truth and in sincerity. <clears throat> Purge all of your members. And that's what this lesson will be entitled, the emphasis of this lesson. And we're going to use the nucleus of it coming from Exodus, the 12th chapter, in the spirit of the Passat, of the Passover. And um, we're going to, of course, have precepts to complement the volume of the book for essentially it's about Yahweh Shai. And we being the body of Yahweh Shai, we're a reflection of him. And so we're a, a reflection uh, of the image of the law as well. And that's why we likewise are partakers of the Passover and we must purge all of our members. So this is Exodus, the 12th chapter, in the 8th verse. It says, <clears throat> And they shall eat of the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. So these are the constituents that has to be present. Um, to properly function the Pesach. But not only that, these are all the representations of, ele of elements in the spirit. All right, the bitter herbs represents the bitterness, the myrrh of this truth. All right, because this truth has a certain essence of bitterness to it. The sacrifice, Yahweh Shah, that's bitter. It's like our, our Pesach turns from joy with 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 my shah, with Moses to bitterness with Mashiach and it was really manifest at his at his crucifixion at his death and that's why we we eat the bitter herbs in remembrance of him of course the lacham the bread and um because that's a representation of his body and that's why we eat it and so it's a reflection on our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. It says, <clears throat> verse 9, eat not of it raw, meaning, not, for context's sake, we are eating in haste. All right? This, this cooking, this culinary expedition was done in haste because we were fleeing the Egyptians. And that's why the, the, manneris, the mannerism of it for a tradition based and the law based, it's also we do it in a format of haste to the best of our ability. It says, um, <clears throat> and likewise, we're supposed to move in haste to the to Yahweh Bashim al You know, move in haste to his tower, which is his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. St scripture says, the righteous run into it and is safe. And I have a precept. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to grab to refer to the righteous and who that may be. And it's going to be in Isaiah, and it's very soon. But if I may, I'm going to continue to read. And it says, you know, the unleavened bread represents the humility, you know. All right, the fire represents affliction, double straits, you know, trouble, you know. Temptation, furnace of adversity. That's what we're roasted in. We're also that lamb that's on the on the um, we're on the burnt altar. We are that lamb. So what do you mean we're the lamb? Well, because if we have to take our cross with you, how shy? And so we have to sacrifice in our life to be without blemish. Because in verse 5, it says, your lamb shall be without blemish. 
And we have to sacrifice and purge our members, purge our fat, purge our blood. Yahweh did it. Uh, and to be without blemish. The fat is always burnt. The blood is always burnt. You know, it's it, no matter what type of sacrifice it is, the Lord requires a fat offering. And we'll get it. Verse 9, it says, Eat not of it raw or sodden at all with water, meaning not to boil it. Uh, not the crock pocket, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a matter that's done in haste. It says, but roast with fire. That's the fastest way to get it cooked. All right. It says, and also, may I say, that's the, the fire, that's because just in the nick of time, the Lord is going to save us at the blink of an eye. He's going to save us from fire, from nuclear fire. But he's going to do a quick work on this place. It's not going to be a prolonged military expedition. He's going to allow these these saw missile with a hypersonic warhead come and detonate on this place, and it's going to be a wrap. You know, the saw bombers and all type of Satan and hype and all type of uh, you know uh, Iranian missiles, Suleimani missiles. You know, uh, East Indian India missiles, Pakistani missiles. It's going to get bad. That's fire. That's the Passover. The Lord's going to pass over us with fire. But as he was with Moses on the burning bush, as he was with Moses in the third uh, in the third month after us leaving Egypt, he came and he was on the top of Sinai and he was uh, uh, burning fire. He burnt the top of the mountain. The Lord was nothing but fire. That when Moses entered up into the, into the clouds, he entered up into fire. How you think that Mount Sinai was burnt on the top? As you go look up images today, it's burnt. It's just a huge mountain. It just has a big, it's just burnt to the crisp on the top mountain, top part of the mountain. Where did that happen? Was that a was that a, a bonfire that went wrong that just stopped on a certain part of the mountain? No, I don't think so. I think that was Yahweh by Shem Yahweh. Shai. He is. And he told Moses that. He spoke to him in horror of in that regard. It says, it says, all right, it says in verse nine, eat not of it raw, meaning go through the process of being purified. Go through the process of the fire, you know. It says, nor sodden at all with water, but roasted with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. So, because we in haste, now when you go into other offerings that we'll do in the Bible, in Leviticus, the peace offering, um, sin offerings it was done in uh, very specific manners you know and it was a it was a time drawn thing it wasn't something that was just done on the go it was a very ceremonial experience it was a big deal actually a sacrifice to the heavenly father is not just a, oh you know it's just which that's not what the Passover was either but it was something that was told specifically to be done in haste because the Lord, he's going to come as a thief in the night. And so the Passover was actually a reflection of the new priesthood after Melchizedek. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a foretell, foretelling of the new priesthood and how it will be ushered in. And it was as similar to it was in the old. But the Lord will pass over. His afflicted. He will visit, and he has visited, I must say in past tense, the dry bones. And that was via Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. That's why the scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the Lord Yahweh, he put a sacrifice on the altar. He did things. That Abraham was willing to do. 
And he went all the way through and he did it. And it says, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That was his first fruit. What a sacrifice by Yahweh. Good God. He didn't have to do that. He did not have to do that. Don't ever think that he had to do that because he didn't. But it was because he loved the world so much. He loved Yasharallah so much. He loved Bahar so much that he gave his only begotten son. And that whosoever that believeth on him and on that name said, well, shoot, they're not going to perish. But will have everlasting life. That's the, the most, that's the perfect priesthood. I've never heard of a priesthood better than that. That's an excellent priesthood. And that's an excellent sacrifice. That's the greatest sacrifice. It's inspiring. When you really slow down from your vain life and consider the majesty of Yahweh by Shem Yahushah. <clears throat> and so that's Exodus, the 12th chapter. Now, I wanted to get a precept. Give me one, bear with me one second. I wanted to get a precept because I read the ninth verse. No, now, pardon me. It says his head with his legs. That, and it was all done in that format because it was done in haste. Now, the other, the peace offerings, which we're going to get into it, that was done ceremonially in a certain fashion. It's well as sin offering. We're not going to read everything. We're going to hit key points. So let me, but I did want to speak of the pertinence. So the legs, the head and his legs with the pertinence thereof. Right, which the pertinence, which comes from the Hebrew word quarab or quarab, depending how you pronounce it, and it says mitts among inner parts, middle, and that's talking about the intestines, the guts. I remember Apostle Ariamlop was speaking in this regard not too many years ago, and he was elaborating as he always does about the sacrifice of Yahushai. And so the Korab, so the inward, so, and when it says burn the inward, it means burn the inward man. Because what is the inward man filled with? I mean, you, we know. The Lord knows in his conscience, he knows. Burn it. Burn it. You know, burn that essence that is within us. Anything that is within, burn it. Purge, clean, purify the inward man. The inward prophet. The inward elect man. Who we are, who we believe to be through hope. It's actually through our hope. And the thing about it is like, okay, but how you can't say you're elect, you're right. That's why we say we hopeful elect. You can't take away our hope, though. That's what you know. We're not about to debate about the hope. That's just not up for debate. That's just our gift. No, it's not up for debate. Leviticus, the third chapter. The first verse, it says, and if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before Yahweh. And I believe the herd had to be of the goat or the lamb. It, uh, like you go to verse seven, it goes into that. But. Point being, I want to go in verse nine. And may I add, Yahweh Shai is that he's that goat and he's that lamb. He's the Lord is all of that. He's like he he represents that too. Yep. He's our peace offering. He's the Prince of Peace. 
He it's about him. He's he's the main guy on the field. And he right there on the field with us. That's why it would be a terrible calculation to come against us. It will initiate Armageddon. So let's go to verse 9. It says, And he shall offer of the sacrifice of peace offering an offer made by fire unto Yahweh. It says, The fat thereof. Now let's actually go to that word fat. Because the pertinence, which is the karab, which was the inwards, the intestines, the inward man actually. Now the the fat, which is you have fat within throughout your body, you know. But I wanted to go see the, the inwards right here is the karab. That's the inwards, which that's the same th word for uh, pertinence that we just read in, the, in Exodus the twelfth chapter. But I wanted to get the word fat, which is something. It's of the same body. Yes, it is, but it's a different word. It's chalab. Chalab, which is fat. Now, choices, best part, abundance. Now, because you have to understand the 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 fat, the fatness, from an anatomy perspective, is considered as what you could say robust or excess. You know, is the is heat hot. It's a lot, you know, you know, with fat and fatness represents like the fatness of the earth, which that word actually, I believe, is, um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, shaman. I believe that word fatness is shaman in that context, but it's got, it's talking about the same thing when it says choices, best part, abundance, because that's what, uh, essentially, in, in, in regards of the sacrifice, because that's I'm, that's what it means. But in regards of when it's burnt as a sacrifice, meaning you're supposed to sacrifice the best of what you are and the best of what you have. So the fatness could be a, a man's son, you know. And even with the peace offering, that that fatness is. Now I'm gonna hit you with this: the fatness is not eaten though. The the fat is preserved for the Lord. You know, you don't eat the fat. You don't eat the man's son. The Lord actually didn't require Abraham to um, kill his son. He he had a goat offer, and then and uh, we're going to go into uh, Leviticus, right here, and now I'll say the, the fatness is a representation of the son. Now guess what? Yahweh Shai he was preserved. Us the he the Lord said dedicate unto him the the firstlings of all of of our our sons and our stock. All right. Which the we are that firstling, we are that sacrifice. But at the end of the day, long term, we're actually preserved. We're a sacrifice that's preserved. I mean, elect, we are the sacrifice, but at the end of the day, we still gonna live forevermore. It's an eternal sacrifice, and we're, we're eternally dedicated towards the Lord. That's why the Lord told us to dedicate our firstborns unto Him. Our first links. All right. Now I want to go to Leviticus, the ninth, um, the third chapter, the ninth verse. It says, "And he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering of an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, the fat chalab, I believe thereof, which is the the fat thereof, and the whole lump. It it shall he take off hard." By the backbone, so with a peace offering, unlike the Passover offering, you actually take the fat from the, um, you separate it because it's, it's not time restraint. You just do the sacrifice. It don't matter how long it takes, you're supposed to do it how the Lord said it. And so you'll separate that fat and because it's, it's not um, like the Passover offering, you know? It's different types of offering and different manners of how you're supposed to conduct it. It says... And by the way, we don't incorporate these type of offerings, peace offerings anymore. Our peace offerings is with our own selves. We're supposed to take these principles and reflect them upon our own livelihood. Even the Passover is, is for ourselves. It's not just a ceremony. It's deeper than a ceremony. But the, the law is still perfect. I won't say it's not because it is perfect. 
uh, Leviticus, the third chapter, the ninth verse. Now, Yahweh Shai, he was our sacrifice. It says, and he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, the fat thereof, meaning the abundance, the, the best, because the fat offering smells good. When you, if you smell fat burning, it smells, it has great aromatics. The Lord loves the fat. He loves, but at the same time, the fat is the Lord's. You got to remember, the, the fat's not yours. The fat is the Lord's. He, the, he gets the fat offering. It says, the fat thereof and the whole lump, it shall he take off hard by the backbone and the fat that covered the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards. Because the you have fat inside your um, your inwards, your pertinence as well. But in, in Passover, the Pesach, you don't you burn it all. You don't remove it. You don't separate it, but you still, you still, well, you burn it together. You still burn the fat because the fat's the Lord's. The abundance, the best of what we have is, is dedicated to Yahweh by Shemiah Verse 10, it says, In the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away and the priest shall burn it upon the altar. See? The organs, the members are all the Lord. Those are the Lord's. It says, it is the food offering. Now, the liver is not unlawful to eat, but the fat is unlawful to eat. Like these, the kidneys, you now with a sacrificial offering, you can't eat that. And the priest can't eat the kidneys. It's to the Lord. But the, the, um, the fat, nobody can eat. It says, with the kidneys, it shall he take away. The priest shall burn it upon the altar. He said, it is a food offering made by fire to Yahweh. He said, and his offering be a goat. Then he shall offer it before Yahweh. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it. And then kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about and that blood represents the, the sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh the same way in the Pesach now it's different sacrifices but they kind of represent the same thing in different ways so the sprinkling of the blood, blood around the altar is the same thing in the Passover when the sprinkling of the blood around the doorpost in the Passover you do it with hyssop the, the priests just do it if I'm not mistaken with um, their fingers you know in, in um, this type of sacrifice. But regardless, the, the, the blood is a representation of purification. You know, we're purified by the life. The life is in the blood, Yahweh is life. So it's Yahweh Shah who purifies us. You know? And it says round about the altar. The altar is the priesthood. He, the priesthood is that, the temple, the, which the altar represents the temple. The tabernacle is what is protected by the blood of Yahweh. All these, all these ceremonies, everybody, people, you got people boasting in the Levitical priesthood, talking about they're a Levite. Where are your papers, sir? Point being, I'm not questioning if you're a Levite. The point being, the priesthood is after the order of Malak Tazadak. Melchizedek, which supersedes the Levitical lawyer priesthood and was before the lawyer priesthood. The lawyer priesthood was a, a interim priesthood. It was not the eternal priesthood. The 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 a four the a four priesthood which which uh, Abraham partook in was after the order of Melak Tazadak, Melchizedek, not the Levi. Levi was the grandson. Well, actually, he was the great grandson. Of Abraham, so he didn't partake in the Levitical priesthood. He partook in the priesthood of Melchizedek, that which is eternal, that which Yahweh Shai has restored. All right, and so that's pretty much the lesson. Just wanted to go reflect on the law, reflect on um, a sacrifice. The separation of the altar, you know, and the particulars of the Heavenly Father and how he finds things pleasing in this proper season, in his proper ordinance. So that we're going to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Makakodash. 
double unders into the elders in the past of great millstone and salutations to you i can shalom keep the faith